doing live on Facebook. Oh, so yeah. We're, yeah, we're streaming now, Yap van der Waal. Well, I just want to welcome everybody out there listening now and in the future. Um, I'm Kate White. I'm here with Yap van der Waal. It's very nice to have you here, Yap. Welcome. <laughs> And what we're talking about today is we're talking about his seminal course that is just the most yummy, wonderful uh, course called Human as Embryo, the Embryo and yeah. Us, Human as Embryo. Yeah. And uh, we're, we've hosted, uh, I've hosted yeah, several times, both in person and via the internet uh, through my Center for Prenatal and Perinatal Programs. And we have our online course now up in the prenatal and perinatal healing online. But we wanted just to have people out there who might be interested in understanding more about the embryo. Actually, maybe you have questions or maybe you're just curious, but I thought I would just invite you to listen to Yap and to yeah. the two of us talk. So what were you saying, Yap? You're like, why well, study the embryo? So you were starting to tell me a story. So why don't you go yeah. ahead? Well, I studied the embryo, yeah. yeah. I can imagine that it's not the first thing you might think about when you are dealing with people, when you are a therapist or when you are an osteopath or whatever, or a psychologist, maybe it's not the embryo is the first dimension you think about, but it is that the embryo taught me so much about myself about the body and that's what I want to share with people and that's why I advise people to follow a course about the embryo because the embryo has a lot to tell and to teach about what we actually are mm -hmm. and more and more I think that people nowadays get a kind of dissociated from their bodies what what actually is your body is it a machine a, a brain my brain is producing me how, how, how do you deal nowadays with the body? And the embryo taught me a very important thing about uh, the body that I had to get rid of because I was also anatomist. And I thought that anatomy was the science to tell me what human bodies and what my body is. But I discovered that the embryo has to tell you far more, yeah, far more deeply Give, might give you far more deep understanding about what you actually are. And that is that you are not your body, but that you, so to say, are a being of body and soul, of mind and body. And that that is the most important thing that I learned from the embryo, that we have to consider, we have not to stop to consider ourselves as mind and body. And nowadays people tend to think that we are only body, and that our body is producing us, that is the body producing our awareness, our consciousness, our feelings, our thoughts. And that might be a big error. So I advise people to come to the embryo and listen to the embryo and involve in the embryo. Maybe you can learn there a lesson about yourself and therefore about your patients, about the people that you treat and that you, yeah, you're, you're dealing with. Is that an answer? Yes, that's a good answer. I, I've also learned an awful lot from the embryo, just yeah. being with my own embryo cell by cell. So yeah, um, we, we, the body comes out of us, you say. Yeah, this is yeah, the roomy yeah, quote. Yeah, yeah. And then and I'm not the we, first one. I'm not the first one to say that it's a very no. old uh, yeah. item in philosophy. And um, I actually got the quote from Rumi. Mm -hmm. And then we are in the 13th century when he says, um, the body developed out of us, not we from it. We made the body cell by cell, we made it. Mm -hmm. And that gives quite a different relationship with your body than the idea that you start as a cell and the cells start to grow and the body becomes the complicated organism that starts to walk and to do and to go to school. And then out of that body comes a personality. No. Yeah. It's, it's different. And one of the things related is to that is that people tend to 
neglect the embryo. Oh, that's that's so long ago. In the beginning, oh yeah, in the beginning we are embryo and then we uh, we are shaping our body. But what comes, what is important is the phases that come after it when we start to walk and to do and to to talk and to think and to. But the embryo is also a very wise and um, capable being, and it's doing the most important thing that you can do as a human being, and that is shaping your body. Yes. And I learned from the embryo that that is not only in the first eight weeks of your life, but that's the first principal thing you are involved every day, every second, and that is shaping, performing, maintaining your body. Yes. So as Kate says, uh, we are not produced by the body. We are constantly producing, creating, performing our body, and by that we create our soul, our consciousness, and so on. So yes. So like one of the things I've really discovered about going back to being with the embryo is that you sometimes, if you go back to these early places and start to feel the consciousness that's there as we make our body, it can be healing. And so that's why I promote the embryo. The embryo is a big part of the online healing school. I have others who teach the embryo, but there is an energy there. There's a consciousness and I feel like, yeah, the course that you teach the, the human as embryo, the embryo in us is every day is packed with lessons, yeah. and examples. And you talk about how the embryo in, in the embryo, we pre-exercise. So yeah, say a little a more about way. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a way to look at it. That um, it's, it's not that in the embryonic phase or in your, your daily life, you just simply grow but growing is a performance, literally. You shape forms, and that's a performance, that's an act. You shape your body cell by cell, you shape it. And that means that, um, so to say, um, the first way you behave is your behavior in forms, in the shapes, in the gestaltung, says the German language, of your body. So that is a performing, and that means that that early phase might be considered as, oh, there you do your things in a morphological way. And Blechschmidt, which is a famous German embryologist who inspired me a lot, says, actually, soul, your mind, your soul is not something that comes in later, you know, produced by an organ or something, like by your brain, no. The first performance of your soul, the first acting of your soul, is that shaping performance of your body. And then he says something very important. Soul is not something coming in later. Soul is pre-exercised in the way you shape your body. So all the things that you can do later, physiologically and psychologically, and maybe even mentally, your mental behavior, your psychological behavior, is pre-exercised in the shapes by which you create, perform your body. And that makes the embryo interesting because maybe there we can learn what, what we were meant or are meant to be because in the shaping, in the growing gestures, I say gestures, in the acts and gestures with which you shape your body, you pre-exercise your later physiological behavior, psychological behavior, and that's interesting. Yes, especially when you connect it to spirit, because that's where yeah. you begin to track, like we are spirit coming into form, we come into form, and the embryo is the closest to the spirit. Um, and then as we grow, like sometimes, yeah. Yap, I like when you say, you know, there's the beginning, and then there's the end of life, uh, end of your life, there are very similar gestures of coming yeah. in and going out, but then life is what happens in the in between. Yeah. I think you refer to, for example, to the, the gesture of birth. Mm -hmm. gesture. People think that, okay, I'm born. And when you study, uh, when you involve yourself in the process and the gesture of being born, then you might discover a very important gesture that you, when you are born, perform in a physiological way. But it has been pre-exercised already in this eighth, seventh week of your existence in a morphological way. And, and that's important, you have to repeat the gesture of being born many times again and again during your uh, life, 
And so you can say that uh, psychological, you have to perform the gesture of, of birth is a gesture of uh, development. And mm -hmm. many times in your life, you have to go through the same type of crisis that you go through yeah, a point of a kind of still point and then you get through it and then you are born and you develop out of the phase before. So maybe being born is a very important pre-exercise how to perform your life to be a being of soul and body. And yeah, that that's uh, actually I consider and I can show that in my course that being born is a gesture of dying. So the same, um, the same process with which you end your life, so to say, is performed every day. Every day you make the gesture of connection with your body, going in and perform. But at the same time, you have to die out of that body in order to create your soul life. So dying is not the end. Dying is the gesture of development, of performing, performing your development. And that's why I like the process of being born to describe it as a gesture of dying out of yourself. You do not come from your mother. You die out of yourself. And so maybe the gesture of birth is a very important pre-exercise for how you later on might be born several times again and again in your life in order to develop from the former to the next stage of being. Yeah. Well, in the course, we go over all the stages and the, the wonderful yeah. ways that we can learn from this early. <coughs> and, and, and Yap, you bring together several different philosophies, which are very engaging. The yeah. polarity of Randolph Stone, yeah. and the, the, the work of Rudolf Steiner. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and that has actually, yes, to do with the, the number of two, the two-ness or the duality that we are, uh, people sometimes ask me, are you a dualist, you know, and a dualist is supposed to be a person who believes in body and mind. But I'm not a dualist, I'm a polarity thinker. And for me, spirit or soul, that I could, in my course, I will make more precise definitions of the two domains, but let's say we are a being of spirit and body. And the relationship between spirit and the body is a polarity relationship. It's not just simple two ways to two different domains. No, polarity means that spirit must be the complete opposite of the matter of my body. And that in that interaction between these two polarity dimensions, you create a threefoldness. Mm. And then we come to the philosophy of Rudolf Steiner, Randall Stone, the Chinese philosophy with the yin and yang principle, who also mentioned the body, every living being, actually, as a threefold, this a triune human, in which you have, you know, an extreme dimension where you are aware, where you have your soul life. The other polarity of it is your body life, where you perform and digest and are dealing with the matter. And in between, you get the dimension of yeah, where you are in your soul life, which is partly spiritual, partly body. So a threefold being telling ourselves, I think, I think we perform, um, we perform our soul. It's my spirit and it needs the body to perform, bring to expression my soul. What is my soul? My biography, my whole life I'm writing my biography, I'm performing my biography, that actually is my soul. And that is, so to say, the product of my spirit, my mind that works in the body. And in that dialogue, in that interaction, we see the creation of a middle and in between what uh, Andrew Taylor still referred to as the soul living in the fascia, in the middle, in between. That's important to understand. Yes. Well, you, you teach us this uh, pattern over and over again, like in, yeah. with the it's, organs and the, and the tissues and, the, and yeah. our, how our body is representing our soul and how yeah, we- in a, way, yeah. in a way, I also have to teach uh, people about science. You know, mm -hmm. what I do is science. It's a scientific approach. But the thing is that people often think that scientists, you know, 
are neutral observers and that they gather data and, and phenomena. No, as a scientist, me too. I have an idea. I have an idea that we are beings of spirit and matter. And if you think it, you can see it. You can see spirit by means of the phenomena of biology and things that take place at a conception or in an embryo and at, at, in your adult life. So I want, to, I want to help people to accept and to see and to realize that spirit is a reality, not just fake or, or an, a, an, a byproduct of, of a brain or something. No, it's, a, it's the polarity dimension in your body. It's opposite of your body. It's the polarity of your body. And together, that is, so to say, your wholeness. That is you. You are mind and body. And mind and body are not simply two, two principles. No, they are polarity. And polarity, I will show in my course, it will, I will show it over and over again because we have to look at the body in a threefold way. And then when you have that glasses, you know, when you have that glasses to see it, you see spirit everywhere. It's not something that's imaginary or an illusion. It's reality. Yes. Yeah, well, it's a very special course. I certainly do invite everyone out there to come. I'll put the uh, link to the course in, um, yeah. in, the, in the notes down here in the comment section here on Facebook. Yeah, but maybe it's also good to tell the people that my public is so diverse. Yeah. I mean, I'm not only a, pe a people that are connected with anthroposophy. I have you know, Qigong people, Tai Chi people, uh, Chinese medicine, uh, cranial psychotherapists, osteopaths. And when I look for what is the common denominator of all these people, then it is mind. The question, what are we? What is spirit? If we are beings of body and mind, if we are beings of bodies and spirit, where do we come from? How can I see that? How can I treat it? Work with it. You can work with the spirit, the soul in you may be. Your, the spirit might be your healer, the dimension in you that can organize your body also when it goes a, in a pathological direction. It might be spirit that is capable of redirecting the organic processes in the direction that is a more healthy one. That's my idea. Well, I think it's something that I've experienced in myself is just to come back to the embryo. Really, sometimes you have to go back before the trauma to really begin yeah. again. And you can when you study with the embryo. It's been my experience and it's and it can awaken parts of yourself that maybe have been covered or obscured by your experiences that are difficult. Yeah. So it's, it's worth it to come and just spend some time understanding this really amazing place in us. We're not just cells that just kind of go automatically without an extra special part that's still- uh, Yeah, so. and don't forget, it is not dead. I mean, the embryo is still in us. It's yes. not past. It's the primary in us. And that's what many people have forgotten. They consider it as a past. And no, it's actuality. When you can discover, when you can recognize the embryo in yourself, then, then you are a big step further in the essence of what you are and what your patient or person that you are dealing with is. Yes. And our friend Anna Chitty often just says, this is something for us to remember all the time. Yeah. yeah. Remember, then you see it in the other. And this is what allows such a fierce belief in us and our goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's wonderful to come and learn and, and yeah. be invigorated with this message of, of our spirit yeah. matter. And it's soul. a way of... It shows you, it, it makes you aware of a way of life. I mean, our, our modern biology is so, it tends, tends a, a little bit, or quite, quite not a little bit, tends to become mi militarized. <laughs> and this will show you, the embryo will show you a biology of dialogue, of love, of interaction, of not one force pressing the other, but always the dialogue, the exchange in between the middle. I could call it, it's a, it's a biology of love, of, of dialogue. Yeah. And that's quite, and that's not an alternative for regular biology. Regular biology, Darwinistic biology, it's okay. <coughs> but it's 
in my opinion, half of the truth. There's another truth to find in the embryo in your body. And it has to do with wholeness and with healing and with love. That's my ultimate yeah, idea about it. Yeah. Yes. Welcome to our online course. It's June 2nd, 3rd, and then we, we rest a day and then the 5th and the 6th in 2021. Yeah. It's online in the PPN healing. I'll put it in the comments and I'll include it in our in this little piece here. Uh, join Jaap van der Waal and I. Yeah, uh, and join us, you know. Us. What makes us special in this course, it's the second time I do this course on uh, internet with uh, Kate. And we have a certain interaction way of uh, dealing with each other, which is also inspiring for me and for the audience. So it's, yeah. it's a special course, this one. It's not like the other ones I give. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, thank you. See you there.